want to explore Iceland but don't have time to do a long driving tour? Come check out how we spent four of our days in this icy wonderland. We were so excited to spend a good chunk of time exploring Iceland's capital and largest city Reykjavik. Located on the southwest coast of the island, Reykjavik sits amongst a backdrop of breathtaking landscapes and is known for its colourful buildings and quirky vibe. Reykjavik's history began with the settlement of Iceland by Norse explorers in the 9th century, who labelled the city Smoky Bay, or Reykjavik in Icelandic, due to the geothermal steam rising from the ground. Today, Reykjavik is a super dynamic city that has an awesome art scene and is known as a foodie heaven. We absolutely loved eating our way through this adorable city, visiting the nearby Snaefellers Peninsula and luxuriating in the infamous Blue Lagoon. Today is day one after our intrepid Northern Lights tour. Unfortunately, we did not see the Northern Lights. Still had such an amazing time. We had pretty much perfect weather. Now we're in Reykjavik and we get to do our own thing, which means we've got lots of amazing restaurants booked, a bit of a culinary experience and get to move at our own pace and just walk around Reykjavik and uh, tomorrow we've got a tour of a, I think it's called the Snaefellies Peninsula. I'm definitely butchering that. After that we're going to stay at the Silica Hotel at the Blue Lagoon which I'm really excited about. Really lush way to finish our trip here in Iceland. Knowing that we had a big day of exploring amazing food in Reykjavik, we thought we would skip breakfast and just start our day with a morning coffee and hot chocolate at Rost, right on Reykjavik Harbour. Iceland are known for their seafood, in particular their seafood soups and lobster soups. It's been on lots of the menus so far, but I've been avoiding it because I knew we were coming here to uh, try the lobster soup. So here we go, let's see how it is. Lots of lobster in there. Lobster tastes so fresh, that's beautiful. It's really, really nice. So we've just left the sea baron and the lobster soup was actually so nice. It was actually like a bit capsicum-y and celery in there. I, just, I sort of thought it would be more creamy going in but it was more of a sort of tomato soup but it was fantastic. But any of these restaurants here along the harbour foreshore are known for having really good seafood so I'm sure that you can't, hey, <laughs> can't miss wherever you go down here. Do a little punch into TripAdvisor for reviews of the restaurants and there'll be lots of good food down here and lots of yummy places. The national food of Iceland is the hot dog, of all things. Um, the famous place is right next to a hotel, so super convenient. So it's got three different sauces on it. It comes with fresh onion as well as fried onion as well. We've already had one before, so that's delicious, but we're going to have one again, but I'm so excited. So good, every time. Iceland is considered one of the most LGBTQI friendly countries in the world and as a part of Reykjavik Pride in 2019, Skola Vodaska Street was permanently painted in rainbow colours. It's a super cool view, as the rainbow leads to the city's most iconic landmark, Hallsrams Kirkja, making it one of the most Instagrammable spots in the city. When strolling around the main town of Reykjavik, it is impossible not to see the Hall Scream Kirkja. This incredible church absolutely dominates the skyline and has to be one of the most iconic images of Iceland. The church's unique and modernist architectural style complements the elegant interiors beautifully, though the main attraction of the church has to be the viewing platform, which offers unbelievable 360 degree views of Reykjavik and is the perfect place to visit at sunset. We had heard that the Reykjavik food walk was one of the best things to do in the city, so we couldn't help but book a spot. This tour was actually just voted the number one food experience in the world for the 2023 TripAdvisor Awards. So the tour went for around three hours and cost us 160 Aussie dollars per person. We visited five restaurants with our local guide and every single stop blew us away. Some of the highlights for me were the Arctic char at Messen and the rye bread ice cream at Cafe Loki. A low light for me was the fermented shark. Ugh. My mouth is watering just thinking about all the amazing food that we tried. Having loved the natural beauty of Iceland so much, we were keen to explore further than just the Golden Circle. 
We decided to do the Snavelness Day Tour with East West Tours. This was a 12 hour day trip exploring the northwest of Iceland and the Snavelness Peninsula. Our first stop was Kirkshafell, probably the most picturesque and photographed mountain in the country. Surrounded by streams and small waterfalls, it was also one of the filming locations for Game of Thrones, specifically for scenes featuring the Arrowhead Mountain. Our next stop was the spectacular Jupalan Shandor Beach. This spot is an incredible and rugged black sand beach located at the foot of the Snaefulness Peninsula. The beach is well known for being the site of several historical shipwrecks, and you can actually see the remnants of these shipwrecks when walking along the shore. The natural beauty here is just insane with the stark contrast of the white foamy waves against the dramatic black sand. This was an amazing place to watch the beginning of the sunset. So these rocks here are used to determine the salaries of fishermen. The minimum standard supposedly was the heaviest two rocks, which it goes 150 kilos is the biggest, 100 kilos is the second biggest, 54 kilos is the middle, and 23 kilos is the smallest one. But the minimum to be able to work and row the boat to the top two. You were I, I tried the 54 kilos and I couldn't <laughs> even do that, so I wouldn't get a job, I think. Maybe I could cook the fish or scale, descale the fish when they're back, but I wouldn't be allowed to row. Arnastapi was the cutest little fishing village, renowned for its rugged and dramatic coastal landscape. Our favourite part of our time here was the Gatletta rock formation, which is almost like a bridge walking over the ocean. Our final stop on our day trip was the Budokirkja, which is the only black church in Iceland. The distinctive colour, combined with the church's remote and dramatic setting against the lava rocks in a glacier, mean that this spot was absolutely breathtaking, and looking back was my favourite photo from the whole trip. So we're here at the Blue Lagoon. It's something that we've been looking forward to this whole holiday and it's certainly been worth the wait. It's a nice crisp day, so we've got the cold air on our face. It's about zero degrees outside, but the real hot water about 40 degrees. And you can see all the silica along the top of the rocks here, the minerals, and then the frost along the top of the rocks. It's just such a beautiful time of the year to do it. And you might be able to see the smoke rising up from the power plant behind me, and that's actually how this all started in the 80s. It was the excess water runoff from the power plant. Someone with psoriasis went swimming in that water to see if that it helped with the psoriasis and the condition of the skin, and it actually did. So the minerals and silica in this water hopefully has some healing properties and can revitalize us and make us feel nice and new. We thought we'd treat ourselves to a touch of luxury to finish our time in Iceland by booking a night at the Silica Hotel. And that marks the end of our time in Iceland. We hope you enjoyed the comedy of us attempting to pronounce all of these words in Icelandic. We absolutely had the best time and left the country already dreaming of our next visit. We really enjoyed doing a nature-centric trip. It was something that was a bit different from our usual city stays. We can only imagine that this would be a completely different trip during the summertime, and we can't wait to come back and explore a different side of this country. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed our vlog, please be sure to hit that subscribe button to follow along on more of our adventures.